Hello! I am visiting Rikugien in Tokyo today and I want to take you with me. Rikugien is a daimyo garden and was built during the Edo period. Specifically in 1702. In the Meiji area, in the Meiji period, after Japan opened up, this garden went into possession of Iwasaki Yataro, the founder of Mitsubishi. And then, at some day, Iwasaki called the management of Tokyo to ask them if they would like to take over. The gardeners are working here, so it's a little bit loud from time to time. Today I would like to show you the route I am usually taking during my garden tours. I will not talk all the time and not explain everything, but if you want to know anything specific about this garden, you can either buy our ebook about the Kugien or book a garden tour with me during your next stay in Japan.
If you look very closely, you can see a Sanson Iwagumi hiding in the back. bit of a wild planting with Dokudami. I can't pronounce the Latin name right. Hutonia or something like that. In Japan it is seen as wheat but it is actually a very very useful plant and I just learned thanks to one of our blog readers that it can also be used as a uh, mosquito repellent. During the state of emergency we have right now, you cannot enjoy sweets in the tea house, only matcha. But if you're visiting during more normal times, then I can recommend getting a set of matcha and the sweets, or if you don't like matcha, the sweets alone, because they are so, so delicious. The pine tree over there is said to be the oldest tree, the oldest pine tree in this garden, having been here even before the garden was built. I hope this maple tree will be okay. And the bugs, whatever kind of bugs they are, only pulled out the rotten wood from inside and didn't kill it by themselves. I only can read the top, Fukiage. This is the Fukiage hammer with the Fukiage pine tree and the Fukiage tea house over there. This garden is dedicated to waka poetry and people who are familiar with waka, especially during the time when this garden was built, when they looked at these markers, they knew which waka was meant and looked at the scenery and thought about the waka. In the middle of the pond we have a Horai island. 
here and in front of the big central island we have a sleeping dragon stone. This area where the Kugien is located was once famous for breeding Azalea. So you will find a lot of different Azalea in this garden. And to remind at those times, they even covered a huge hill completely in Azalea on one side. This tea house was originally built by the Iwasaki family and it's the only remaining original structure. It was damaged during the big earthquake in 2011 but restored. This tea house is called Tsutsujino Chaya and it has a special structure. The pillars and beams are made of rhododendron wood. And it is not easy to find rhododendron with such thick trunks so they have to be very very old This is the back of the garden. You can see it's very shady and it's also very nice to be here when it's so hot in summer. But if you want to visit in summer to cool down a little bit, please wear long clothes because as the mosquitoes will kill you. If mosquito generally like you, then 
repellent might not work for you in areas like this in Tokyo. As an example, I visited a botanical garden here once with short clothes and repellent and the repellent helped for like two minutes and then my legs were covered in mosquitoes. They changed this. You are not allowed to climb from this side anymore. It's my favorite side to climb. And it's so funny because usually you're coming from here. So you won't see the sign and just go up. <laughs> I already climbed this hill two times today, so I will stay below now. This is the hill I mentioned before, covered in SLM. I will include a picture from above inside this video. In this garden they tried to restrict the high buildings around it a little bit. In some spaces you can see them, but some are also well covered by trees. It's a nice contrast to Hamadi Q, where you have these high-rise buildings all around the garden. The big tree over here is Magnolia Grandiflora. And it's flowering now. My private tours through the gardens of Tokyo. I normally don't do group tours where the people don't know each other. My private tours are lasting um, around two hours in one single garden. 
I can also make three hours if wished because there's so much to tell, so many details. And I like to cover many different topics like plants, history, elements, also Japanese culture. In Japanese gardens, everything is connected. The Japanese history, the culture, The garden tours are also always specially prepared. So usually I am visiting the garden beforehand to see what's flowering at the moment. What can I talk about? So every garden tour will be different for each customer. But still the same basic information. This area is often overlooked by tourists. Such a big tree. It's a Kusunoki comfort tree. how it once looked and what it reminds of but of course it's not existent anymore as so many other structures but still there's something to see see in this area I think you all know hydrangea. The usual ones are hydrangea macrophylla with uh, large flower balls. What only few people know, know is that they came from Japan, but not in the shape we know. So they were once taken from Japan, went overseas, were bred in the shape we now know and then returned to Japan. So in this area we have the common hydrangea, different varieties. Hydrangea involucrata, hydrangea hirta, hydrangea serrata, They are usually seen as the 
mountain hydrangea. And now we are already almost finished with the small tour. In this house you can usually eat udon, buying souvenirs. I hope you liked this tour through the Kugian Garden in June 2021 and will join me on other tours too. If you want to learn more about Likugien, I would be happy if you buy our ebook with all the information inside.